With the regular season about to end and the playoffs getting ready to start next week, it is time for another Pacific Division Roundtable Playoff Preview Edition. Welcome to this special edition of Locked On LA Kings, Locked On Golden Knights, Locked On Oilers, and Locked On Kraken, all part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm Eddie Garcia, your host of Locked On LA Kings. You can follow me on Twitter at Eddie on Fox. Let us introduce you to our other hosts that are joining us today. She is the host of Locked On Kraken. It is Erica L. Ayala. You can follow her on Twitter at elindsay08. Hello, Erica. Hey, hey. Good to have you with us. We also want to bring in the host of Locked On Oilers. He is Brett Holden. You can follow him on Twitter at the Real Holden Forty. Aloha. How's it going? <laughs> it's going good. And last, <laughs> last but not least, is the co-host of Locked On Golden Knights. It is Chris Golick. He is at TD Chris G. Hey everybody! Greetings from the top of the Pacific. From the oh, top, yeah. how are we doing, everybody? Oh, yeah. How are we doing, everybody? Boy, he was a lot nicer last time we had him on. He was, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit fanduelcom on to get started. Well, all of our teams are in the playoffs. All of our teams have hit the hundred point mark. The Pacific Division, by the way, the only division in hockey to get four teams with 100 points or more. But it's soft. It's a soft division. It's yeah. a soft division, right? How about that? <laughs> now, the Kings and the Oilers are back in the playoffs from a year ago. Vegas is back after missing out last season, but they've been in four of the last five seasons. And congratulations to the Seattle Kraken in the postseason for the first time in franchise history. Erica, welcome to the party. There is nothing like your team in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Let's go. <laughs> now, we still don't know who is playing who, so let me see if I've got this straight. Chris, if the Golden Knights win their final game against the Kraken on Thursday, Vegas wins the division, gets the number one seed in the West. Or one, one point. One point clinches it all. All right. Now, Brett, if the Oilers win their final game on Thursday against the Sharks and the Golden Knights lose, the Oilers do have the tiebreaker, so they would get the division title and the number one seed. Number one seed in the Pacific and number one seed in the West, baby. And Erica, if the Kraken beat the Knights and the Kings lose to the Ducks, Seattle would get the three seed. But if the Kings win or the Kraken lose, LA gets the three seed and Seattle would be the number one wild card team. That's correct. <laughs> All right. So uh, it is taking notes here. This is a lot right now. Yeah, I, I, I don't blame you. Uh, so <laughs> it is certainly fun that it's coming down to the wire. Every game is important, uh, but we're all in. We do know that. Uh, so let's talk about one aspect that's very important for all of our teams and every team in the NHL, and that is the health of our teams. Uh, Brett, I'm going to start with you because I think the Oilers have been pretty healthy all year. I know Vander Kane was out for a little bit, but how healthy are the Oilers getting ready for the playoffs? Yeah, don't say it too loud around <laughs> here because it has kind of been the one thing that has been the good constant for the Oilers has been that they have been relatively healthy. Yes, you mentioned Evander Kane has missed basically exactly half the year with that very ugly and scary wrist injury. And then he also uh, took some time out with, I believe it was a shoulder injury, if I'm not mistaken, off the top of my head as well. So I uh, was able, or he did miss some time. But other than that, the Edmonton Oilers have been able to stay relatively healthy. The one player that is coming back from injury right now for the Oilers is Ryan McLeod, who did play last night against the Colorado Avalanche. His first game back in a couple of weeks, and he con contributed with an assist. So the Oilers, while also being healthy, is also getting contributions from the entire lineup, and that comes with being healthy as well. Chris, the Golden Knights have been anything but healthy all season, and yet... They've been at the top of the standings for most of the year, so that is certainly a credit to you. There's been a revolving door in net. Mark Stone, back for the playoffs. Let us know what's going on health-wise with the Golden Knights. Mark Stone, I will give you dollars to donuts. He's back within one of the first couple of games of the playoffs. He began skating on Monday, non-contact jersey. I believe he took Tuesday off, um, and I'm pretty sure he's gonna, he was out there today, or he will be out there. Um, as far as Mark Stone, there's a lot of other things going on. My son Christopher hanging out with us. <laughs> Hello. Um, so Logan Thompson, he did not respond well to his rehab. He's still going to be on the shelf for a little bit. Aiden Hill had an AHL start, played a couple of periods. We'll see uh, if he's going to be available. But Larry Brossois has been phenomenal. Laurent Brossois, we call him Larry. But Brossois has been phenomenal, undefeated in regulation. And 
you still got that quick guy just in case things uh, don't work out with one of our other net minders or injuries. And there, there's more, but we only got about a half hour, 35 minutes to cover a lot of stuff. <laughs> uh, no, no doubt. And, and Erica, what's going on with the Kraken? Seems like they've been pretty healthy. What's, what's the health update with them going into the playoffs? Yeah, since last we spoke on our roundtable for the Pacific Division, we talked a lot about goaltending for all of our teams. And since we've seen a few more tweaks here and there with Philip Grubauer, so we've had Joey Decord come up in relief, including against Arizona at the Mullet Arena, where he used to play with <laughs> that ASU. So that was uh, fun for him. Um, but uh, we also have seen, though, Chris Drieger get some starts with uh, the Firebirds in Coachella Valley. So basically all that to say, uh, still don't know what's really happening with goaltending. Uh, Martin Jones has fallen out of favor. Uh, I think we were talking about that a little bit last time as well. It's just been a little bit of a tough go for him and need a little more consistency, I think, going into the playoffs. So to be determined there, Andre Burakovsky. It was actually the ESPN broadcast when we officially clinched. It was the first I personally had ever heard that it was uh, officially a broken bone in the leg for Andre Burakovsky. So he's been out for a number of weeks. We have not seen Jonas Donskoy since pff, training camp. Um, and, <laughs> <laughs> and John Hayden, also a player that's a, a two-way player for us, a little bit banged and bruised. So uh, we've got some injuries that we're dealing with. We struggled with some consistency since last time we spoke. And I thought that might be the case. I felt that Edmonton was going to climb in there and we see what they've done, uh, have a chance at that number one spot. So uh, we've got a few things going on with us, but the excitement is palpable. I will actually be in Seattle tomorrow for the last regular season home game. And, mm. and we'll see what the playoffs bring. <laughs> Has Edmonton lost since our last meeting? Since we did this, this last <laughs> no, round table? Yeah, right. I'm serious. No, no, no. I, I'm serious. How long, I feel like they haven't lost since that round table. Yeah, I think it, they, maybe just two games. Yeah, yeah. and I think th it was uh, one in regulation and one in uh, overtime or shootout. Well, oh, been listen to you. Listen to you. Just one. <laughs> yeah, no, can't, can't blame him. I mean, it's not bragging if you do it, I guess. No, but they're that, doing that, great. But that leads us to my next question. Real quick, though, as far as the LA Kings health, uh, they did get hit by the injury bug later in the year here. They just got their top defensive defenseman, Mikey Anderson, back from injury. Uh, Alex Edler has been banged up. He's supposed to come back soon. He's skating. Uh, but the big one is Kevin Fiala who was their leading scorer for most of the year, their big offseason acquisition. He's been out for a while, a knee-on-knee -knee hit against Colorado. Uh, he has not been skating, and today Tom McClellan, the head coach, said they're keeping their fingers crossed that he and Gabe Velarde will be ready for the start of the playoffs. But how do we feel about the way our teams are playing down the stretch? The Kings, like I said, scuffling a little bit. They had some big games against Edmonton and Vegas and didn't fare too well. Uh, so I'm a little bit concerned. Maybe if they get healthy going into the playoffs, that will certainly straighten out some of their issues late in the year. But let's start with you, Brad, and you brought it up, Chris. I mean, my goodness, eight-game winning streak. I think it's 17-2-1 since March the 1st. The, and no one this side of Boston is playing as well as the Oilers right now, so you got to be, be just ecstatic the way they're playing. Yeah, and that uh, number that you mentioned, that 17-2-1 since March 1st, uh, evidently, lines up with when the Edmonton Oilers acquired none other than Matthias Ekholm. And that was his first game for the Edmonton Oilers on March 1st. And since then, it, the Edmonton Oilers have looked like a completely different team. And you can even look at the last five, six games for the Edmonton Oilers when they have absolutely locked it down defensively in their own end. And down the stretch here, you're right. This team genuinely it looks like there can't be a team that can beat this team because we talked about how offensively potent this team is and the fact that they're now bringing in the defensive potency as well the organization the physicality the ability to get in front of shots and i mean vinnie deharnay is six foot seven imagine trying to go in front of the net and going Okay, well, uh, I'm going to go over to the slot here and hopefully you don't worry about me. It, it's just been, it's as difficult as it is to play against the Oilers in your own end. It's more difficult to play in the Oilers in their end at this point. And not to mention their D or their goaltending as well has really brought it together. Uh, Stuart Skinner has now tied a franchise record for the most wins in a season by a rookie goaltender. The guy that he tied it with 
Grand Fear. So if you believe in good juju, the Edmonton Oilers have a lot of really good juju going into the playoffs right now. I felt it. I I said it last time we talked. I was like, let's not sleep on the Oilers. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, they certainly have uh, gotten it all together, as as Brett has talked about. Uh, Erica, though, for the Kraken, um, they've had a pretty good late season push, to getting him in, in position. It looked like they were a lock for a wild card, but now, as we mentioned, they're threatening for that uh, number three seed. Yeah, it's been a little bit of a roller coaster, maybe, maybe just from my perspective, um, we, we talked about it, Seattle kind of punching, uh, against their weight, uh, up in weight, I should say, or arriving to the party early, however you want to say it. And that has come with, um, a lack of consistency at times. I think that, you know, once we kind of had our team, it felt like maybe the nerves set in a little bit, but down this stretch in our last 10, we're seven, three, and oh, so that's, that's great for us, uh, being able to clinch that first playoff berth and now really get to work um, on some of the fine tuning, some of the little things getting to a hundred points. I think these are all really great momentum builders. And what I will say about Seattle is that they've had to earn it. Uh, you know, we don't have the super duper stars that we're seeing throughout the league. It has been something that we've talked about anytime I visit one of your shows and certainly in the round table that we are by committee. And basically everything that we do, that's how we win games. It's when we stray away from that, particularly on the defensive end. Uh, you know, Brett, you were talking about defense. You know, I love talking about defense, but that's what we have to do to win games. And that's what it takes to win games in the playoffs. So I'm hoping that we have that positive momentum. We've got, you know, Arizona tried their best to bully ball us around, uh, you know, and we were finally able to get a win against Vancouver. So <laughs> that felt good. Um, so I think it's, it's a little bit of a mixed bag. It hasn't been a solid trajectory one way or the other to get to the playoffs, but that's playoff hockey. So I'm hoping that uh, maybe we were able to accelerate some of that growth a little bit and, and that we're feeling confident that we can overcome a lot of different scenarios. And Chris, as well as Edmonton has played, they still have not caught Vegas as of this point. So the golden Knights have been able to kind of keep pace and stay on top. How do you feel the way they're playing late in the year? Um, I mean, just throwing the health away for a second, assuming we're at or close-ish to for full health, the game has been really solid, and Bruce Cassidy has done a remarkable job with his system, with managing the situation, with players coming in and out of the lineup and finding a player like Pavel Dorofiev and a place for him to fit in the lineup and contribute with some big goals in some big games down the stretch. Um, has it been, you know, they're not bullying people. They're not necessarily playing that physical of a game right now or anything like that, but they're finding ways and they've been rising to the occasion for big games, except when Edmonton came and just uh, made quick work of us, unfortunately. But outside of that game, like the Dallas game over the weekend, I thought was a very good effort considering no Jack Eichel. Uh, Jonathan Quick was going basically our fourth bully. No disrespect to Quick, just the reality of where he is on this team right now. Zach Whitecloud goes down with an injury. Shea Theodore is already out with an injury. So Vegas is finding ways to take what, who's ever going on the ice and being competitive. And we obviously need to continue that on Thursday night. Hopefully, uh, I mean, hopefully we can take care of business early on in that game, but we're going to get a much different version of Seattle. Seattle looked very tired last night. Uh, they were on the back-to-back -back physical game against Arizona. And that's not going to be the same team that Vegas is missing on Thursday night. It's going to be a good battle. It's going to be a good crowd in Seattle. And, Hopefully some of our Vegas friends make the drive up to, uh, you know, maybe equalize it a little bit. And listen, let's get the game to overtime, and I can care less after that. No, no overtime. <laughs> overtime, baby. In regulation, there's 60 minutes for a reason. <laughs> All right, we've got more. Get, of get rid of the shootout, whatever they do. Get rid of the shootout, whatever they do. I'm tired of the shootout. We've got more of this Pacific Division playoff roundtable. But real quick, i got to remind you that uh, this show is brought to you by FanDuel. The NBA playoffs start this weekend, for those that care about that. And uh, now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. It's a bonus bet back. If your first bet doesn't win, just download the, fa download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It is safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to points scored to three-pointers made. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. So don't miss your chance to get your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in a bonus bet when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That is FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of the NBA. 
Yeah, I forgot to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, obviously, uh, goaltending is very important. Brett, you talked about uh, Stuart Skinner, the rookie netminder there, kind of stabilizing things uh, for you. Uh, Chris, I'll start with you. We've talked about it. What, five or six goalies have posted wins this year? But you said Lorenz Bossois has kind of uh, asserted himself here of late. Uh, they're they're going to stick with him, I assume, and with Logan Thompson, not sure what's going on with him, right? Yeah, so Logan has had the pads on for a couple of days now, and uh, per Coach Cassidy today, actually, the quote was, Thompson is not responding, is not, not progressing as well as Aiden Hill is right now. So Aiden Hill did have an AHL start uh, this past Friday evening. Only went two periods, but he was on a pitch count. That's the only reason. So you have to assume Aiden Hill will be in the mix come playoffs. And whether it's uh, Quick or Aiden Hill backing up for the first couple of games is to be determined. Um Whichever way it goes, I'm okay with it, uh, but Brossois has been an absolute machine for us. And I was actually at uh, Brossois' first AHL games this season when he was beginning his rehab, and he was, for lack of a better term, terrible. Now, in injuries and all that, there's you know a reason he wasn't playing well. And I remember talking to a couple of the scouts at that game, and like, hey, guys, you know, it seems like they're kind of just leaving, you know, letting Aiden Hill, I'm sorry, uh, Brossois just hanging out to dry, two-on-one, three-on-one breakaways. You gave up four goals in a period. Like, are you watching this? Is this like a decent start for you? Or are you just kind of shaking your head? And they both gave me like the thumbs down, like, you know, he didn't look the part. So you look at the at his road since then. He got, got had to get called up because of the emergency loan situation. Gets put on waivers. Not one team bites. I'm sure a few teams wish they would have now. He gets his game in the AHL. And now he's, I mean, got a shot to possibly lead VGK to the cup. If we can, uh, you know, work it out amongst us, uh, you know, if we all face each other later on, hopefully uh, Brossois is the one that's going to gonna take us there. We'll see. It's just crazy how this all shakes out, though. Crazy. Erica, is it Philip Grubauer or Bust at this point? It's kind of feeling that way. But again, he has to stay healthy. We've called in Joey Decord. Um, I know Philip Grubauer has been a little bit banged up. Again, can't really get a sense for what is going on with Martin Jones, but he has the most wins for us, almost 30 wins uh, on the season for Martin Jones. And that was a lot of that early success that we found. So a little bit concerning, I think, what we're going to see in net. But Joey Decord has the best save percentage of all of them at 900 exactly mm -hmm. as we uh, march towards our, our final uh, regular season game and into the playoffs. So also brought up, and I was mentioned, an emergency basis. So we'll see what happens there again. Not completely confident in goaltending. Uh, I think there are a lot of unknowns just with the health and, and maybe reliability that we have at this point, which is not ideal going into your first playoffs, but we've been able to make it work in the last handful of games. So like I said earlier, we're just going to have to find a way to grind it out. As for the LA Kings, uh, they started the year with Cal Peterson and Jonathan Quick. Uh, both those guys are no, you know, <laughs> Quick's in Vegas, Cal's in the <laughs> AHL. So they've got Phoenix Copley in the Trade deadline pickup of Jonas Corposalo. They both actually played pretty well. It's kind of been a 1A, 1B situation. Uh, my read on it, though, is uh, Corposalo, who just had a shutout in his last start against Vancouver. I think he's going to get the nod to start the playoffs. Wouldn't be shocked to see Phoenix Copley at some point if necessary. I think the team's comfortable with either one. But I think it's going to be Jonas Corposalo to start the playoffs for the Kings. We'll see. Uh, obviously, goaltending is very important. We know that. But as far as, you know, hockey is a team sport, but individuals can make a big difference. Certainly there's a couple of pretty big individuals up there in Edmonton. But let me ask you this. If, is there a, a, a certain player, could be a defenseman, could be a, a forward, that this player's got to make his presence known early in the playoffs and be a part of things for our teams to have success? Uh, Chris, I'll start with you. Is there one player, maybe it's Mark Stone coming back from the injury, is there somebody that this guy's got to be in the playoffs and he's got to have an impact if this team's going to go somewhere this year? Mark Stone, assuming he is going to be in the mix game one, that's the that's the chalk answer. Um, our power play needs it. We can't get anything from the bumper. Uh, we can get lucky with some rebounds and stuff every now and then, but our power play has not been very good. That'll be the one thing that potentially does bring the Golden Knights down. Hopefully, Mark Stone is back and in full health. Um, outside of that, someone like William Carlson. Um, it's kind of for my co-host, Tony, as well. But uh, William Carlson could be a key factor. Um, he got paid after his first season with the VGK, getting over 40 goals to the tune of a $5 million-plus contract. He plays more like a $3 million 
two-way forward. And he's a really good player, don't get me wrong, but he's not playing up to that $5 million level. So maybe the playoff life can shine a little differently on someone like William Carlson, and he can really keep that second line going, or even third line, depending on what happens. Because when Stone comes back, I could see a complete shakeup of the line. So we'll start with Mark Stone coming back and just, you know, keeping the intensity of the team up and stuff like that and the, the energy on the bench, and then I'll give a writing book to William Carlson as well. Uh, Erica, I know that Seattle kind of does it by committee. As you mentioned, there's no real standout star, although Jared McCann did have a 40-goal season. That's pretty good. But is there a certain player other than a goaltender that you think this guy's got to be a presence for Seattle to advance in the playoffs? I love that you said other than a goaltender because, that yes, we need our goaltenders yeah. to show up. Uh, you know, uh, Jonesy knocked around. Grubauer has been knocked around, mentioned it before. You mentioned Jared McCann. That's also, you know, kind of maybe the chalk answer because, you know, he's sitting on 70 points, 40 goals, got to that mark. He also has been very determined, one of the first players to really – talk out loud about how much he wanted this team to get to the playoffs when it was still hanging in the balance. And so definitely he's a guy um, I talk about Maddie Beniers all the time. I think those are the guys that we're going to get contributions from, but if I had to throw in a, a wrench here, you know, I really want to see, um, Oliver Bjorkstrand, and maybe I'll, I'll say Ellie Tolvanen. I think those can be kind of impact players for us. They have been solid numbers-wise. I mean, you look at Bjorkstrand, he's at 45 points. Uh, Ellie Tolvanen comes in and, and has been phenomenal for us after not getting ice time with the Nashville Predators. He's got 31 points. Um, but I want to see them just hit that next level, level up, and I think that's really going to be a huge boon for us offensively. And Brett, we know about the two horses, uh, but Ryan Nugent Hopkins, 100 points this season, uh, three players with 100 points on your roster. But is that we know the defense is that is it a defenseman that you would pick? Who's somebody else other than the obvious? And see, and that's what I've been kind of racking my brain around here since you asked the question is it depends where I want to go here. I think the obvious place that you want to go is maybe defense or the goaltending. So you can put it on Stuart Skinner. You can talk about Skinner being a rookie on a team who is now becoming a potential favorite for the Stanley cup. That's a lot of pressure. And if you don't show up from game one, kind of tough to play from behind. So maybe you can put Stuart Skinner in that conversation. You mentioned the defense. Everybody always looks at Darnell Nurse on the back end and always has fire for Darnell Nurse. And I have been one of those guys from the start of the season that said, mm, you know what, Darnell is playing better than you think he is. May, he wasn't healthy in the playoffs last year, had a torn hip flexor, which is difficult to even walk, never yeah, mind skate. Fun. So he's. I think this is a big playoffs for him. You can mention Evander Kane as well, who missed a lot of time. For me, it is going to be my true answer is Kyler Yamamoto, who since the playoffs started or since he came into the NHL and played in the NHL playoffs, he hasn't been exactly the player that he can be in big games. And sometimes he does disappear. If he is able to play the type of game that the Edmonton Oilers fans and the Edmonton Oilers know he can and that Kyler Yamamoto knows he can as well. I think the Edmonton Oilers solidify their back or their top six in a way that people don't really realize that they can. not And yes, Leon Dreisaitl and Connor McDavid are there throughout it all. You mentioned Ryan Nugent Hopkins, but there's always through the entire season has always been Kyler Yamamoto in that top six as well. If he can get his game going, I think it's just – Line after line after line after line is just nastiness for any team that you're for any team that the Oilers are playing here. And I think for my LA Kings, it's a pretty obvious answer, but it's Kevin Fiala. They went out in the offseason to get him to be a difference maker. Uh, he was the leading scorer for most of the season, although Andre Kobotar has caught him since he's been out of the lineup due to injury. He's the one player on the Kings can, that can make his own offense. Uh, you know, Adrian Kempe is a sniper, but Fiala with his skating ability it can draw defenders to him. He's a good passer. He can he can be a playmaker for the Kings. Also, you know, he's a factor in the power play as well. So he needs to play if he's healthy, and he needs to contribute if he is in the lineup. So it's Ke it's Kevin Fiala for the LA Kings as far as one player that's going to need to play and perform if the Kings are going to get out of the first round of the playoffs. Uh, I'm going to throw this out there and let you guys think about it for a second. If there is a question that's intriguing to you that you could ask one of the other hosts, what would it be? 
But before we get into that, I want to remind you that today's episode also brought to you by Built Bar. Looking for a delicious treat but don't want all the fat and calories, got to try a Built Bar. They are covered in 100% real chocolate, come in unbelievable flavors like churro, peanut butter, brownie, and coconut almond. Uh, they're only 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, but a whopping 17 grams of protein. And now you don't have to wait to get a box. You can go to your local Walmart or Sam's Club. They're in the pharmacy section. Also, they've got, uh, in addition to the new flavors, the old standards like cookies and cream, double chocolate, and coconut puffs, Built Bars, protein bars that taste like candy bars. All right. I don't know if anybody wants to raise their hand. Does anyone have a burning question they would like to ask one of the other hosts? Chris, you raised your hand first. What do you got? Brad, I don't care about that McDavid dude. I don't care about dry side. I don't care about, definitely don't care about Evander Kane. I can promise you I don't care about Evander Kane. <laughs> I don't care kind of about Darnell Nurse, but, and I don't care about your, your, your fun little power play that's doing all these wonderful things. Yeah. But we, we've hit on this already. What is with the defense? Like, Edmonton has just turned a complete corner. I've always never believed in Edmonton's ability to possibly win a cup. Because you're not going to win every game 5-4 in the playoffs. It's not possible. And while the four of us are here, I will very confidently say this as well. If Edmonton keeps playing this defense, L.A., you're toast. Seattle, you're toast. Vegas, we're gone. Edmonton will win the Cup in 18 games or less. I'm not even kidding when I say that. It keeps going. So just give us a little more about the defense and why this has happened. Matias Ekholm. It's it's as easy as that. It's been Matthias Ekholm. The ability for the Edmonton Oilers to insert a, a guy who is elite in his position. Let's be real. He is elite in his position. The fact that he is able to just... It, it, first of all, his skating is unbelievably uh, underrated. He can end a cycle just like that. He is a heavy six foot four human being. And to pair that all again with the skating, it makes it very difficult for teams to a come in on a rush and try and beat him, then go into a corner battle. But I'm just talking about one guy here. Why is he so important? Well, he's been paired up alongside Evan Bouchard ever since he came here uh, at on uh, February 28th. Uh, and then his first game was on March 1st. But why he has been so influential on Evan Bouchard is because he doesn't or he allows Evan Bouchard to make mistakes and as well just be more confident in his game. That's Evan Bouchard. That's just Evan Bouchard. Then we can talk about Darnell Nurse because Darnell Nurse over this season and the seasons previous, he's been overworked. He's been playing in positions and situations that he shouldn't be playing in. And with the addition of Matthias Ekholm, you take that uh, – out of his hands and you're able to play Darnell Nurse in favorable possessions and favorable positions and situations and also in games where he's fresher down the stretch and we have seen that in his offensive game not only his defensive game but his offensive game as well which is he is the fifth highest scorer on the Edmonton Oilers behind all those guys you mentioned already. Then you can talk about the the uh, addition of Vinny DeHarnay as well, who has been an absolute treat in the back end for the Oilers, who has marinated in the minors and at Providence University for the last couple of years since the Oilers drafted him back in 2016. He has been in the Oilers organization for a while, and he's already a mature young player, and he comes into this lineup and has really made <coughs> his uh, mark on this team and we haven't even got to Philip Broberg so that it, it just already adds so many different dimensions to the Edmonton Oilers that they already had and then they add even more to that so that's that's how this defense has just gone f uh, to a whole nother level Erica maybe this side of the New Jersey Devils the Seattle Kraken have to be the biggest surprise in the NHL this year um do you feel like they're just happy to be here? Or is this a team that has absolutely nothing to lose? I mean, let's be honest. All of our other three teams had pretty high expectations coming into this year. It wasn't there for Seattle. And yet they have had this unbelievable season. Are they just happy to be there? Or is this a team that's like loose, no pressure, and is looking to just be, spo uh, be a big spoiler? I think it's probably somewhere in the middle. We're definitely more than happy to be here. I mentioned Jared McCann and that he was very vocal Um you know, especially after the trade deadline, just saying how determined he was to get this team to the playoffs and to play for a Stanley Cup. And, you know, I know that he's not the only guy that that's thinking that, but he's been the most vocal with us as far as media. I think 
Also, Dave Haxtell, our head coach, when we officially clinched our, our playoff berth, he said both to media and then in the post game celebration, you know, nobody outside of this room thought we could do this. Nobody. Is that a celebration? <laughs> it wasn't a celebration. It was a conversation, I should say. Uh, well, well, I should say they do a celebration every time they win a game and they have the little hat. So that's what it was. It wasn't. Okay, I got it. That's cool. Yeah, not just for the playoff berth. To be clear, yeah, no, we're not, we're not doing that. But, but, and that's, but that's the point, right? He said no one thought we could, we could be here, uh, except for the people in this room. And you know, he had the the greater staff there as well because it was, uh, you know, w- literally the most important game to date for the Seattle Kraken is clinching our first ever playoff berth in our second season. And but then the next thing that he said, or the next few things that he said is now, now the work now is when we got to get the work put in the work. And I think that really speaks to all of that character building that we talked about so much in season one, because when we were losing, that's pretty much all we could talk about. This is when you're starting to see the fruits of that labor and that's why a team that on paper I said maybe we're, we'll be lucky if we finish five has been able to defy expectations. And so that's why I'm not ready to count them out. There's something gritty in there. It doesn't look pretty. It doesn't feel comfortable all of the time, but there is a determination. So are we completely loose? I would not say, but we are definitely more than happy to be there. And we are really excited to play Seattle crack in hockey in the postseason. All right. Any anything else? Go ahead, Brett. You got the final question here. I have a question to you, Eddie, and that is in regards to the recent form of the Los Angeles Kings. A loss to uh, the Colorado Avalanche recently, and we know the two losses to the Edmonton Oilers uh, last week as well. Did get a win recently, if I'm not mistaken. I, I can't remember exactly which one it was, but are you? How do you feel ar- around the the form for the Los Angeles Kings heading into the playoffs? Especially considering, I mean, I, I again don't want to toot the Oilers' horn too much here because it feels like they already have a little too much. But uh, it, they've been hot recently, and we know how the Kraken have played recently as well and how strong the, the Golden Knights have been. How do you feel about the uh, LA Kings' current form heading into playoffs? Uh, not great. Uh, they did have a 12-game point streak, which is a franchise record, and then they took a pretty big step up in competition. Vegas once, Edmonton twice, Colorado, so... That was part of the problem. All those teams are playing great right now. But to me, it's the health of the team. That's the key. Mm -hmm. If they can get Kevin Fiala back, if they can get Gabe Velarde back, and they can contribute, I think this is a team that is going to be a tough out. Those two guys aren't healthy if they're not contributing. It affects all areas of their offense, their power play, and they they I don't think they're going to outscore their issues. So I'm not feeling great, but it wasn't that long ago that they were playing some pretty good hockey, and then this injury bug happened. So hopefully the injury – issue will uh will not be a factor and uh and if so then i I think they'll be a tough out but i can understand why i would favor certainly vegas or edmonton uh in a head-to-head matchup at this point guys that's going to do it for our uh pacific division playoff roundtable uh chris gollick host of locked on golden knights thank you brett holden host of locked on oilers thank you erica l ayala host of lock on kraken thank you i would say good luck to you in the playoffs but i wouldn't mean it i will just say this the Stanley Cup playoffs are amazing. It is the best time of the year. We are all in it. May the best team win. Is that fair enough? Can't wait to see y'all in the yeah. second second round, baby. See y'all then. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Brad. Take care. All right, guys. Uh, thank you guys all really for joining us. Really appreciate your time. And uh, again, uh, looking forward to uh, the Stanley Cup playoffs. I'm Eddie Garcia. Uh, thank you for listening and watching this special Pacific Division Roundtable part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.